literally built this fish room in 24 hours. Hey guys, I am super excited for this one. Let's get into it, but you know, first, coffee. All right, now the reason I'm really excited about this video, because this is a big update for my channel. All right, my little fish room. I finally got myself one of these industrial shelves and it is going to make everything I do extremely easy. Um, it's gonna do that because I don't have four on the floor, no tanks there. All right, no, I'm done. I'm done with the stuff on the floor. I got it raised up here. I got the stuff that was, you know, mid-range, a little bit higher now. And I'm super excited because I just don't have to deal with a lot of the stress that I was dealing with before. All right, now, as you can see right behind me here, I have a few gorgeous planet tanks, all right? And one that's not looking so hot right now. And the only reason that's not looking so hot is because it's like brand new. It's barely had a time to even acclimate. Um, everything in there is freshly planted. <clears throat> and as you can see, like my, my light isn't really spanning the full distance of the tanks. It's kind of stopping like right in there. So it's not really getting the full light that it needs. And um, this build is like brand new. I mean, I literally built this fish room in 24 hours. Insane. Um, one of those impulsive kind of moves, but uh, it's one that I really benefited from. I'm kind of one of those people that I get an idea and the idea itches and scratches at me until I like just do it. So I jumped on the, uh, the chance. Um, I had the money from the recent fish swap that I did and a couple sales that I've made recently. So I was able to fund the new build completely out of my fish room. Nothing came out of my pocket or my paycheck, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and yeah, so so these uh, these fish tanks right here are some of the main ones that uh, that actually make me money. I have, I actually, I have a, a few tanks over there too. Um, everything try, that I have, um, I try to make grow plants to fund everything. Now, um, I mentioned in the, the intro of this video, we're gonna talk about efficiency as far as uh, substrates that I'm using. Now, what I mean about that is in the beginning of your fish journey, you know, a lot of people are, you know, more planted tank journey. A lot of people will tell you like, hey, you can just throw sand in, a, in an aquarium and you can grow plants. Now, that's not a false statement, but that is not the way you should go about it when you're talking like growing plants and growing, you know, really healthy ones and, and a lot of them and quickly, not the way to do it. All right, when you wanna do a lot of plants, when you wanna grow a lot of plants, you're gonna need some good substrate. All right, so recently I've done, you know, kind of a dive into dirted tanks and those tanks are working really well. Those are the ones that are directly behind me. Now this one right here is a tank that is uh, sand and it grows veil really well. But every now and then I throw root tabs in there. So it's not even like that's just running sand. Um, I also dose my tanks with, you know, this little thing right here. <laughs> Probably have heard of that, you know, uh, easy green. So basically um, the thing I wanna talk about is just you know, lately I have started adding aqua soil to my tanks. And <clears throat> as far as dirt and aqua soil, don't be afraid to use aqua soil. What I'm doing is I'm kind of using aqua soil as a root tab. So I'm doing sand and aqua soil, and then it kind of makes it easier to, to rejuvenate some of my tanks because my sand tanks, what I do is I just take the aqua soil and just kind of dump it over. And then I use like a, a skewer or whatever or uh, some aquascaping tools and just kind of put it down into the soil to kind of get that nutrients in there. And it pretty much is uh, like the easiest way to rejuvenate a tank if you're trying to like save a sand tank and you want to make it into a uh, plant a tank and you don't want to restart the whole thing. So um, but you do have to be careful about that because if you're adding a bunch of nutrients to your tank and it doesn't have plants already, that can really cause you some problems. I don't really have that problem because everything I have um, I put a lot of plants in right off the bat, or I run it without fish. Like this tank does not have fish because the plants are still growing and some weird stuff could happen with the water. Don't want to put fish at risk like that. Um, that's, that's another thing is uh, I have a few empty tanks still. You know, I, I restarted my Celestial Pearl Danios. Um, they're breeding like crazy. So I got a bunch of fry right now. 
Um, I'm gonna be pulling those fry and I'm gonna be putting them into a grow out tank. And then I also made um, my breeder baskets are better now um, because Shady Grady actually had, had um, suggested in a live stream to use uh, hot glue to kind of seal up some of the holes that I had had in my breeder baskets because I kept having adults get out. And uh, that's actually working really well. So thank you, man. Uh, I've actually implemented that and it makes my, my breeder tanks really smooth and um, you, I, I'll show you guys. But it, it sits more even. I, I used to have to stack them too and it wasn't even with the top of the tank. It would kind of stick up and then my lids looked all wonky and now it sits nice and flat it's nice so my my rooms my my <clears throat> fish rooms really just come together guys there's uh there's a lot of different things that are uh that happening all at once it's really cool now this tank right here i'm currently conditioning a a pistogram of cockatoity female it's a uh, quad red because all of her fins have a flame pattern on it um so she's currently getting <clears throat> conditioned I've been feeding live baby brine shrimp and really staying on that feeding schedule. Like there's been a couple nights where at the end of the night, I'm like, oh my God, I just want to go to bed. And it doesn't matter. I push myself to feed. I'm really trying not to skip any feedings. When I did the, when I did the changeover, there's going to be some added stress. So they are actually separated right now. So I have the male here, female there. And like I said, I'm just using that as a chance to condition them. I separated them due to the move because I didn't want that added stress, but they are uh, now being conditioned. So hopefully we'll get them to breed and uh, we'll see what we can do with that. He's a quad red too, and he is insane looking. Like the finish on him uh, is awesome. I don't think we're gonna see him. I'll get some B-roll and try to throw that over this, guys. But um, yeah, so that that's uh, another one of my breeding projects that I'm working on. I would uh, show you them, but it's not really going to be a lot to see. I have Cardinal Sulawasi shrimp. Now, I bought a group of four Cardinal Sulawasis from Dan's Fish uh, about, hmm, about a, um, two months ago, I think. I don't know. I would have to look into that. But anyways, um, doing amazing. Like, they are they're awesome. I think I lost one, but the other three still in there doing awesome, and they've created babies all right and honestly i could have all four but you just don't see them all together ever so i'm assuming i lost the one but you know i'm getting babies out of them i have at least two babies in there and that is a good sign i just uh i feed some green beans to that every now and then i feed them brine shrimp and then i feed um the uh you know like what i feed everything else uh bug bites uh, I also keep a uh, light running on that consistently and I have it very filled with algae like every wall in that tank besides from the front has a lot of algae on it. I run a sponge filter in there and I keep it heated to 81 degrees. I think that that's what's attributing or what I would attribute to the, the success of the babies because they need a lot of food and those guys like that raving that you see is just them eating constantly. That's what they do all day. They just pick at algae. And so if you don't have a good healthy coat algae, it's not going to really work for you from what I've heard. And, you know, can we really consider anything I've done a success yet? We'll see. We'll see if I get a colony out of them. Because if I start a colony out of those three, that's a success. Um, I also uh, have started a tank that is a crypt species tank. So every plant in there is a crypt species, except for the pothos that's growing out the top. Do you want to go check that out? Let's check it out. All right, guys, now this is my crypt garden tank. Now, I am in love with this tank. I absolutely am in love with cryptocorns. Every type that I can get a hold of, I try to get a hold of. I have um, crypt when dead eye um, green, I believe. It's the only one that I didn't personally know what I was buying when I bought it because uh, it was the first one I bought. So that's like the thing that started everything. And so I think it was uh, a... Crypt Wendedi, I have Crypt Pontidifolia, I can't pronounce it for the life of me. <clears throat> I have Crypt Parva, I have Crypt Lucens, I have Crypt Affinis, which is a red metallic crypt from LRB, and then I have Crypt uh, Beckedi, which is a, a red crypt right here. And then I have Crypt uh, Spiralis, which Crypt Spiralis, um, <clears throat> I bought like huge bunch of it. 
and I, I knew when I saw it, I was like, eh, there's something about it that looks kind of funky. Um, and not funky, like, um, just, it looked, it looked immersed grown, basically. It was looked real grassy, and it didn't look like it was an underwater plant. So I knew it was going to have a huge melt, and I bought, like, a giant bunch of it. And, uh, we, we don't have a whole lot left. I've spread it through a couple different tanks, because when I'm, when I work with a lot of a plant, I always try to break it up um to try to see uh to give it a better chance you know so i have it in here and then i have it in some of my dirt tanks and hopefully one of those bunches really takes off i definitely see some new growth on yeah definitely see some new growth on them so i think it's working but uh we'll see so yeah that this is my crypt grow out tank i'm absolutely in love with the julie de chromos marla rise also in here um and yeah this is a uh, Dracaena that I was given, and I'm trying to save it, but it's uh, not going too well. It was in really rough shape, and uh, probably just going to end up parting ways with it, and then maybe grabbing a tree, because I really want to try to grow an indoor tree. I had that obsession in my mind, and like I said earlier, with the, the rack thing, when I get an idea in my mind that I really want to do, sometimes I just can't let it go, and that's that tree thing is definitely one of them, so I'll be getting a tree soon. All right, now with any move, you know, you're gonna have some stuff that goes kind of weird, right? And for the most part, this one went smooth, but uh, as I'm looking at my 20 long, um, that used to be over in my fish room, I actually took it out of there to build this, the rack, and I have it now on the other side of my TV. So I have two 20 longs on either side of my, or I have a 20 long on each side of my TV. Anyways, um, and I'm looking through the tank and I see a couple shrimp that didn't make it. Um, it looks like maybe the water change forced an early molt and I lost some of them. Now I'm noticing a few of them. So it's definitely something happened. It's not just like a one off thing, but I also noticed that there's a lot of shrimp that seem to be doing fine. So I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I'm not necessarily going to change in anything. I know all my fish are doing fine. I have Celestial Pearl Danios in there. I have um, Norman's Lamp Achilles and uh, I have Pygmy Cories and no one seems to be acting funky or weird or anything. So we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna let it go and see what happens. I'm just gonna keep an, a close eye on it. All right guys, so Thanks for coming by and checking out this uh, update video of my fish room. I'm really proud of it and I'm so glad that you guys came to check it out. If you guys enjoyed, like, subscribe, comment, it means the world, pushes the video to more people and then we can uh, add people to our amazing community here. Um, we're all about fish keeping, we're all about keeping people in the hobby, uh, not just the turnover, we're going to change that into what we do now which is long-term hobbyists keeping fish healthy let's go guys so have a good one and catch you next time